Well, I'm glad you are joining us for this Passover meal. I just recognize that uh, this may seem a little strange to try to be coordinating this meal scattered throughout Kitsap County. Uh, but in a way, it's more true to form um, to the original context of the meal. In Exodus 12, God told all the heads of the household of Israel to lead out in this meal, which commemorated their salvation from slavery in Egypt. And the wisdom of that is that what they did in their households would reinforce what they did as a worshiping community so that what they did as a worship, worshiping community would be mutually reinforced with what they did in the household. And it's a way to inculcate the faith, especially, and it's especially effective for passing faith to the next generation, but it inculcates the faith of the people of God through the many layers of our relationships in our communities. And as we know, if it doesn't penetrate to the layer of the household, the home, the family, uh, then there's a good chance it's not going to stick. And so recognize the wisdom of this that God has given to his people, and especially for kids, maybe for parents, this may seem strange if you're not used to doing a traditional meal like this, but kids don't know it's strange. Uh, kids just think it's what their parents are having them do. So use this as an opportunity to enter into this embodied reenactment of salvation history where we can help our kids enter into the story of salvation history so they, they can see that this is the story that they're a part of, that we're all a part of. This is indeed the story this whole world is, is a part of. So um, with that, one, one note before we get started, for parents, uh, if you have kids uh, who are participating in this, now's a good time to go and hide whatever leavened bread, so just your typical bread, so not the stale, flat, unleavened stuff that uh, you got in your Holy Week boxes, uh, but any un uh, any un or sorry any leavened bread you can go hide it now, and there will be a point in the uh, in the uh, ceremony where we'll have the kids go and hide uh, find the leavened bread and get rid of it, and so you can decide where you want them to put it, but it's it's part of the script and it'll ex it'll be self explanatory. Uh, once we get there. So with that, let me just pray for us before we get started. Father, uh, we, we just come before you humbly, and we want to see you more clearly and know you more deeply. We want to see ourselves as those who are, have been invited into the story that you are writing for all of history, for all of time, the story in which Jesus is declared the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who has come into the middle of history to disrupt the plot line of death and destruction and sin and has erupted in the center of this story with life and hope and redemption. And so we pray that you would use our efforts as a church and as families scattered throughout Kitsap County and beyond to enter into this story to help our kids enter more deeply into this story and that we could walk away from this uh, ceremony recognizing that it's more than just a ceremony. It shows us the God who is here with us, Emmanuel, who is a part, not only a part, but encompasses our everyday life. So may we go more deeply into him as a church family today. Amen. Welcome to the Passover meal. We're glad that you're joining us from wherever you are. We're thankful that even though we're distanced, we are still united in the spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of the Passover. And we want you to know that this uh, meal is pre-recorded, so you can pause or play back any time that you need to. Uh, so feel free to move through the different parts of the meal uh, at your own pace and the kids' activities as well. And kids, we want you to know that you have some important roles to play in our Passover meal, so we hope you're ready, uh, paying attention, and ready to participate. If you have your Passover meal script, we we'll encourage you to grab that, to read along, and respond aloud with us where appropriate. 
This evening we are going to enter the Passover as disciples of Jesus, as followers of Jesus who confess that we've also denied Jesus, that, that we still need him to forgive us of our sins, to pass over our sins. And that's what this night is all about. When God first formed a nation by rescuing them out of slavery in Egypt, he commanded them each year to celebrate this salvation, to commemorate it, and to feast together. Each year, the people of God would do so. They would essentially reenact salvation history uh, by observing the Passover year after year. Jesus himself observed the Passover with his disciples as he, he gathered them together for what we now regard as the Last Supper. For them, it was just a Passover like any other before it, until Jesus announced that this would be the last Passover, because ultimately he was fulfilling the Passover. Through his sacrifice, God would finally, once for all, pass over our sins. So we enter into the scene in Matthew 26 as disciples sitting at the table with Jesus. It says this, now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus directed them and they prepared the Passover. We have prepared the Passover meal. Tonight, we will celebrate and tell the story of deliverance, freedom, and redemption. We must all consider ourselves as slaves in Egypt to sin. We must all consider ourselves to have walked in darkness so that we might celebrate the deliverance in the Exodus as our own deliverance. The evening before the Passover, any trace of leaven or yeast is removed from the house. Searching for leaven symbolizes the willingness to remove any corrupting influence in one's life and willingly submit to God in obedience. Jesus says in Luke 13 that the kingdom of God is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. But leaven also has the power to decay and destroy. In Luke 12, Jesus also says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So let us find and put away the leaven from this place to prepare for our own experience of deliverance. And as we do, let us search for any hidden sins in our hearts that might prevent us from celebrating the joy of this festival. There are pieces of leavened bread that are hidden around the room. If the children could find them and put them in, in a basket, we will begin our Passover meal. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Search me, O oh God, and know, know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Tonight, we tell a story that is not just about Jews and not just about us. It is a story told for all peoples, a story whose end has yet to be told. We gather to observe this Passover as it is written. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. For on this day I brought your companies out of the land of Egypt. You shall observe this day throughout the generations as a practice for all time. We assemble in fulfillment of the commandment. Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. For by the strength of his hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. As we light the candles on our tables, we proclaim that God's light has shined in, into our darkness 
and the darkness has not overcome it. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. People living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Let us pray. We praise you, our Lord, ruler of the universe, who has given us the light of life. Tonight we kindle the festal lights, and we pray for the light of God in our midst that we might see anew the meaning and significance of this celebration. Amen. Passover is about remembering God's fulfilled promises, but it is also about hope, the hope that comes from knowing a God who has fulfilled his promises. So we celebrate redemption of the past, but we also celebrate redem redemption as future hope. The God of the Exodus is still God, and so we know that what has been is also a promise of what will be. The order of the Passover meal is marked by the drinking of four cups. That symbolized the four promises that God made in Exodus 6, 6 through 7. And together we recall God's promises to Israel and to us. I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. In the four cups that we drink tonight, we celebrate the four I will promises of God. Freedom, deliverance, redemption, and thanksgiving for fulfilling his promises that allows us to be his people. We take the first cup and proclaim the holiness of this day of freedom. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am the Lord, and I will free you from the burdens of the Egyptians. Let us drink the cup of freedom. <laughs> As we wash our hands in preparation for the meal, we recall the words of Psalm 24 together. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. And it was at a Passover meal that Jesus rose from the supper, took a towel, poured water into a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. So as we wash one another's hands, we remember that we have all been washed by Jesus, made clean and whole. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
twice during the meal, two elements representing a mixture of positive and negative experiences or emotions are incorporated into the service. The first is here where we will eat parsley with salt water and the contrasting elements serve to remind us that life is often a confusing mixture of joy and sorrow, of bitter endings and sweet new beginnings. We recognize that it is futile to avoid negative experiences and dishonest to pretend that life is all sweetness and happiness. Our hope is in God who works all things together for the good of those who love him in the love he expressed by entering into a covenant relationship with us. Passover is a springtime festival, a season of rebirth, renewal, and new life. The days are filled with more light than darkness and the earth is becoming green with life. Amen. This green parsley represents life created and sustained by God. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Arise, Arise my, my love, love my, my beautiful, beautiful one, and come, come away. away. For behold, For behold the, the winter, winter is past. The rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come. With great delight I sat in his shadow, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. My beloved is mine, and I am his. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, jealousy is fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. And yet, as good as God intended life to be, it is often mixed with tears. This is a cup with salt water. And tonight we celebrate tonight we celebrate the freedom and deliverance that God brought to us as slaves in Egypt. But we will not forget that life in Egypt was hard and filled with pain, suffering and tears. And may we never forget that the struggle for freedom begins in suffering and that life is sometimes immersed in tears. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. The breaking of the bread symbolizes the redemption that has already been accomplished and that which is yet to come. At the Passover, we celebrate what God has done in the past, but we also anticipate what God will do in the future, continuing to bring deliverance to a world that still groans under its slavery to sin as we await our final redemption. We recognize that like this broken bread, we are incomplete with prayers yet to be fulfilled and promises still to be redeemed. Parts of ourselves are still unknown to us. Uh, traditionally, the larger parts of the two pieces of unleavened bread was hidden as a way of acknowledging that more was hidden than was revealed. But it was into this tradition that Jesus said, this is my body given for you. This is my body given for you. Get, revealing that the hidden was now manifest. The hidden was now revealed. Revealing that he was indeed the bread of life. And that through the breaking of his body, our brokenness is made whole.
with the generations that have come before us and with one another, our search begins. We look forward to the redemption that God has promised. For the sake of the God who saved us in grace, we recognize that our redemption is bound up with the deliverance from bondage of all people everywhere. Yes, Christ has been revealed, but we recognize that Christ still must return for redemption to be ultimately fulfilled. It is only the grace of God that sets us free. This is the bread of affliction which our ancestors ate in the land of Egypt. All who are hungry, come and eat. All who are needy, come and celebrate Passover with us. We recognize that Jesus bore all the afflictions of humanity, and in the breaking of this bread of affliction, he took on our affliction on our behalf for our salvation. So those who are participating with children, consider uh, pausing the video and reading through the questions with your family. In Deuteronomy 6.20, God tells of a time when children will come and ask questions to their parents about the feasts and traditions that we keep. It's both a duty and a privilege to answer the four questions of the Passover and to recount the gracious acts of our God. So tonight, we hear the questions asked. Why is this night different from all other nights? Once we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord in his goodness and mercy brought us out of the land with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Had God not rescued us from the hand of the destroyer, surely we and our children would still be enslaved, deprived of freedom and human dignity. Once we worshiped idols, and were enslaved by our sins. But God in his goodness and mercy forgave our sins and called us to be his people. Therefore, tonight is different than other nights because we have gathered to remember who we are, what God has done for us, and to tell our children the story of God's grace. Praise be to God who is everywhere. Praise be to God who has brought us freedom and has delivered us Why on this night do we only eat unleavened bread? Tonight, Tonight we eat unleavened bread because our ancestors in Egypt had to leave in such haste that they could not wait for their bread to rise and so had to bake it while it was still flat. You shall eat unleavened bread, the bread of affliction, because you came out of the land of Egypt with great haste, so that all the days of your life you may remember the day of your departure from Egypt. Why on this night do we eat bitter herbs? Slaves in Egypt. As sweet as our lives are now, we must never forget the bitterness of our bondage. The Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and work them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with hard labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. As bitter as it was to be slaves in Egypt, God gave us hope in the midst of our suffering. We also eat karoset, a sweet mixture of apples, honey, and nuts. Its texture symbolizes a mixture of clay and straw that the Israelites used to make brick for the cities of Pharaoh. But its sweetness reminds us that God can bring joy and hope into the most bitter of our circumstances. I am sorely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord. 
according to your word. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Why is this night so special? Tonight we celebrate that our God is a God who saves. Once we were slaves, but now we are free. In the moment, we will drink the second cup, the cup of deliverance, and we will celebrate in joy of God's deliverance from slavery. A full cup is a symbol of joy. Yet our joy is diminished because of the Egyptians, who were also God's children, suffered from Pharaoh's evil ways. Lives were sacrificed to bring about the release of God's people from slavery of Egypt, and we do not rejoice at the death of any of God's children. As we recount the plagues, we will spill a drop of wine from our cups for each plague to recall the cost of sin and the consequences of evil in our world. Those with children may be, give them the bag of plagues to play with as we recite. Blood, frogs, lice, swarms, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, death of the firstborn. As innocent people suffered and died long ago because of the oppression of tyrants, so people today still suffer from the evil in the world. We cannot celebrate God's deliverance for ourselves without longing that all of God's children experience freedom from their bondage. So we will spill another drop from our cups to recall the cost of evil in our world. Pharaoh continued to refuse to let the people go until the last plague. The death of the firstborn of all of Egypt convinced him to release the people. By following God's instructions and putting the blood of a lamb on the doorposts of the houses, the Israelites were spared this plague as death passed over their houses. This is the symbol of the Passover lamb that was killed so that our children might live. It reminds us not only of God's wonderful grace in providing for us life and not death. It also reminds us that we are called to obedience in response to God's gift of life. We praise you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who hears the cries of the oppressed, who brings freedom to the captive, and who creates for yourself a people. The second cup of deliverance symbolizes God's promise to deliver Israel from slavery in Egypt. So with the second cup, we celebrate the deliverance that God has brought to us. We are privileged to thank God, to praise him, to know him, and to rejoice in his grace. He has brought for us forth from bondage to freedom, from sorrow to joy, from darkness to light, from slavery to redemption. I am the Lord, I will deliver you from slavery. We praise you, O Lord, our God, who has freed your people. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom, in whom we, we have, have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink the cup of deliverance. Well, we have broken bread together and have told the story of our deliverance. Let us now eat together in celebration of our freedom. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. These are the true words of God. 
For those uh, who are participating in the full meal, this is a great time to pause the video while you eat. And during this time, you can have the kids go and find the, the bread of life that was hidden. So earlier, they found the leavened bread to get rid of it. And now they are looking for the unleavened bread, the bread that Jesus broke and declared was his body. And in celebration of his hidden life, his hidden bread, as it were, manifest, they'll go find this bread and you can explain to them that, that Christ has been found and indeed he has found us. What was hidden is now revealed in Jesus, the bread of life broken for us. The third cup is the cup of redemption. It symbolizes God's promise to redeem Israel with an outstretched arm and great acts of judgment. Let us drink the cup of redemption. The fourth cup is the cup of thanksgiving and hope, symbolizes the hope of the second coming of our Messiah and King. Our Passover is now complete, just as our redemption is complete. We rejoice with thanksgiving and humbled by God's love. I am the Lord. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Let us drink the fourth cup and give thanks. The traditional conclusion of the Passover is a hope for the future expressed by Jews throughout history. Next year in Jerusalem, we will conclude our Passover with the same expression of hope and faith in God as we await the coming of a new Jerusalem. God be with us. Next, Next year, year in the new Jerusalem. Jerusalem. We look for his coming. Next year in the new Jerusalem. 